First, I'd like to thank you for having me. My name is Rochelle Christopher, and I am an independent historian. My organization, Victorian Vanities, teaches people about American history. And tonight, we're going to look at some castles um, in the Empire State. Now, this is not a lecture. Did you hear it was a lecture? Okay, good, because it's not. So if you have something to say or an experience that you'd like to share, wait for Sangeetha to come to you with the microphone so that, um, so that everyone can hear what you have to say. All right? So what is a castle? Do we, what do we think of when we say the word castle? Large. Large. England. England. Royalty. Royalty. What else? Germany. Germany. Where else? Medieval. Okay. Um, is this a castle? Is that the castle? What's the difference? Okay, small. So large is one of the most important things, right? What about battlements? Are battlements castles? Battlements. You know, people raining down weapons, raining down arrows from battlements. Does that include in a castle? Sometimes. This actually can be a castle. They say one man's home is another man's castle. So it can be a castle for some people. Um, not usually what we think of when we think of a castle, right? Okay. Um, I want to, so one of the questions that might be important is, in this country, in, Pen in the United States, we've never had to have a castle where you had a keep where you were keeping people out. So when we say castle here, we usually mean large house. And what I, what I want you to do is, I want, to, I want you to think about some castles in Pennsylvania. Now, I don't have pictures for all of these, so I'm going to ask you to, we're going we're gonna to take some time and place some of them. For example, um, do you all know where Cairnwood Estate is in Brynathen? Do you know where that is, what that is? Okay. Have you ever seen the building? It, is, it was built in 1895, and Cairnwood was designed by the firm of Carrera and Hastings. Now, the surrounding grounds were designed by the Olmsted brothers. So what's important for you to know about the Olmsted brothers is that they were the sons of Frederick Law Olmsted, and we're going to talk a lot about him. Frederick Law Olmsted designed designed um, Central Park. He designed, usually he designed the grounds for Biltmore. He designed all sorts of places. And when we think about, when we think about beautiful landscapes that we like, we normally think about Frederick Law Olmsted. Well, anyway, Cairnwood, uh, Cairnwood was actually landscaped by the Olmsted brothers. It was built for John Pitcairn, who was head of Pittsburgh Plate Glass, and it was a two and a half story Roman brick and limestone building in the Beaux-Arts style. So it was built around 1900 or so. The property is now owned by Brynathen College and serves as a special events facility. Now, another one that I want you to think about is Chestnut Hill College. Are you familiar with that? It's like maybe seven stories tall, and it kind of has a Second Empire type of roof on it. Well, that's kind of castle-like in appearance. Now, that's a Roman Catholic college that became coeducational in 2003. Now, the granddaddy of all castles, in this area anyway, is Eastern State Penitentiary. Okay? Now, that was a former prison, and it was operational until 1971. Now, at its completion, the building was the largest and the most expensive structure ever erected. And it quickly became a model for more than 300 prisons worldwide. Hard to believe, huh? Okay. Next castle I want you to think about is Font Hill. You know where I'm talking about? This one's in Doylestown, made of concrete, right near the Mercer Museum. You familiar with that one? Some of you are. Hopefully all of you are. Okay. Font Hill was the home of archaeologist and tile maker Henry Chapman Mercer. Now, it was built between 1908 and 1912. 
It's an early example of what they call poured in place concrete. And it features 44 rooms, over 200 windows, 18 fireplaces, and 10 bathrooms. It contains a lot of built-in furniture. It's embellished with decorative tiles that Mercer made at the height of the arts and crafts movement. And it's filled with a big collection of ceramics and things like that embedded in the concrete, as well as other artifacts from his world travels, including cuneiform tablets discovered in Mesopotamia dating back to 2300 BC. If you haven't been there in a while, it's really quite a wonderful place to see. The home also contains about 1,000 prints from Mercer's extensive collection, as well as over 6,000 books, almost all of them which were annotated by Mercer himself. Okay, here's one you may not be as familiar with. How about Gray Tower at Arcadia University, known as Beaver College? If you're going up 309 at any time, this is the castle that you see on, on the, from the road. Now, in 1891, William Welsh Harrison, who was co-owner of the Franklin Sugar Refinery, he purchased Rosedale Hall from Thomas Auden Reed. Whoops. Huh. Anyway, by 1891, Harrison had expanded his estate to 130 acres, and he decided to add a house and a gatehouse, so he employed the services of architect Horace Trumbauer. Have you all heard of him? Trumbauer is one of the most famous architects in this area. He designed, he was instrumental in designing the art museum, uh, instrumental in designing Laurel Hill Cemetery, things like that. Anyway, he completed the stables in 1893. Well, to make a long story short, there was a big fire and the house was burned. They went to the stables, and then they asked Trumbauer to do it again, to rebuild the entire house, which he did. It was inspired by Olnwick Castle, in, um, which was the medieval seat of the Dukes of Northumberland, which is why it looks like a castle with battlements and things like that. So the new house would include all the conveniences of the time. The cost was estimated at 250000 equal to about $6 million $562,000 today. Now, work was underway by the end of 19, 1893. Okay? Now, another castle I want to tell you about is called Lindenwald Castle. Now, this castle is in Ambler, and it is now, I believe, it's the site of a Dominican retreat. You know where this one is? Okay. Um, this off Rambler Road a little bit. But anyway, Keesby and Madison, they were a firm that designed asbestos. And they were founded in 1873, and they moved to Ambler in 1881. And by World War I, Keesby and Madison's presence caused Ambler to be known as the asbestos capital of the world. I didn't know that. Anyway, he brought in masons from southern Italy to work on the estate modifying an existing Victorian structure to pay homage to Windsor Castle and naming it Lindenwald Castle. Now today, they're planning on, on using the building as part of a shopping center, as part of a shopping complex. That's what I've heard about it last. Um, do you know, have, can you visualize Little Round Top at Gettysburg? I know I have trouble doing that because it's, it's not real close. How about Stokesy Castle in Reading? Stokesy has an interesting story to it. Stokesy was inspired by a 13th century English, English castle by the same name. This one's in Reading. Okay. And anyway, it was once the summer home of the Heisler family. Now, Heisler spared no expense when it came to the 10 acre property. Even with the addition of $30,000 worth of hardware, some of which is still present today, Mr. Heisler's fiance, he didn't approve, she didn't approve of this luxurious wedding gift. It was built in 1931. The castle was occasionally used by the Heister family until 1956, when it was purchased by a group who turned it into a restaurant and operated it until it was forced to close in 2007. Now, in March of 2009, the castle, ballroom, and surrounding grounds were restored. If you ever get a chance to eat there, it is cool. They have knights in armor. They have armored knights around. And Kind of fun, actually. Um, are you familiar with what the Thomas Library at Bryn Mawr College looks like? 
Okay. Well, anyway, it's, um, it's been used as, in use as a library. Now it's been used for performances and for public gatherings. It was designed in 1901. What's interesting about all of the, sh all of the buildings I'm going to tell you about and show you pictures of, they were all designed at about the same time, pretty much. Now, Woodmont, I don't know if you're familiar with Woodmont. Woodmont is a mansion in a hilltop estate in Gladwin. Now, in 1953, it became the home of evangelist Father Divine and the center of his international peace movement mission. Now, I have to tell you that, built more, that it was designed to look a lot like that. It doesn't look quite like that. It's got red tile roofing, but it's what they call French Gothic. It was designed for Alan Wood Jr. And if you're, again, familiar with this area, there used to be a company called Alan Wood Steel. Well, it was actually designed for Alan Wood Jr. And he was a steel magnate, former United States congressman. And it overlooks the Schuylkill over Conshohocken. It is the highest point in Montgomery County. It is a chateauesque building. It was completed in 1894 at the cost of $1 million. It has views of 15 to 20 miles. And the Schuylkill Expressway passes by several hundred feet below. Um, now, Alan Wood, he actually, he actually occupied the estate for less than 10 years. And then he sold it. Now, a year before his death, he sold it to his nephew, Richard Wood, who lived, who lived there for 28 years. And he began subdividing the land in 1959, including the sale of 200 acres to the Philadelphia Country Club. Okay? Currently, or since 1953, it's been occupied by the International Peace Mission Movement, which was started by Father Divine, an African-American preacher who made life better for African-Americans.